There are a number of advantages to using a ball screw style actuator instead of a lead screw design, including efficiency and the ability to achieve higher speeds, loads, and duty cycles. Because the ball screw assembly design is so efficient, a braking device must be used to hold the load when power is off to prevent back driving. Thompson utilizes a wrap spring brake design. The assembly of this design starts with a center hub that is pinned to the ball screw journal. This hub and pin are critical to the design as they must resolve all of the thrust. If the actuator produces 1,000 pounds of thrust force, for example, the hub and pin must be able to resolve 1,000 pounds of thrust in either direction. Each ball screw journal is heat treated to ensure it will hold up for the life of the actuator. The hub will turn with the screw. We then add a needle thrust bearing on each side of the hub. The needle thrust bearing is made up of three pieces, a needle bearing and two hardened washers. After assembling the needle thrust bearing, we will add two brake hubs to the outside along with the spring that holds the hubs together. It's important to note that these three hubs have space in between them so they never come in contact. Depending on whether we have a compression or tension load, we are resolving thrust through this assembly. For example, if we have a tension load or a load pulling the actuator in this direction, we are resolving the thrust with the needle bearing assembly and this tension hub on this side of the center hub. If we have a compression load or a load pushing into the actuator, we would resolve the thrust from the needle bearing assembly and the compression hub on this side of the center hub. Next, we add a friction disc surrounded by two more hardened washers to both sides of the assembly. These washers are keyed to either a housing on the outside of the brake cup or a hex washer in the base of the brake cup. This design ensures that the only part that can slip is this friction disc inside the two washers. This friction disc is actually the brake comparable to the brake pads on a vehicle. So, how does the brake assembly work? If the actuator is extending under a compression or resistive load, the wrap spring slips on the compression hub and the compression needle bearings rotate. All other parts remain stationary. If the actuator is retracting under a tension load, the wrap spring slips on the tension hub and the tension needle bearing rotates while all other parts remain stationary. When power is cut to the actuator, if there is a compression load, the wrap spring will couple the center hub to the compression hub, keeping the needle bearings from rotating. Now the friction disc on the compression side of the brake will engage and keep the screw from back driving. The same thing will occur if power is cut while there is a tension load on the actuator, except now the wrap spring will couple the center hub to the tension hub, preventing the needle bearing from rotating, while the friction disc on the tension side will prevent the screw from back driving. Now, let's imagine there is a compression load as we are retracting. We refer to this as a helping load. In this case, the wrap spring couples the center hub to the compression hub so the compression needle bearing does not rotate. In essence, the motor is driving through the compression side friction disc. The same phenomenon would occur if there is a tension load as the actuator is extending, except the motor would be driving through the friction disc on the tension side. The life of the actuator is reduced in this helping load scenario as eventually too much torque will be required to drive through the friction disc which will activate the ball detent clutch.